All right, let's take a look at a couple of the quiz questions that it seemed like we struggled with. Um, remember, these were also homework questions. So if you found yourself struggling with them on the homework, definitely make sure you're reaching out with questions. Um, the first one, so we've got a car company that claims their brakes are going to work for 5.3 years. So anytime we have some claimed value, that's the null for our null hypothesis. Um, we know that this is also going to be about means because we're talking about averages here, right? 5.3 could not be a proportion. It's greater than one. Um, so anyway, we've got this research facility thinks that uh, the brake system may not last as long. And I think this is, is maybe where some folks got caught up. This is what tells us that we have a one-sided hypothesis test instead of a two-sided, right? If we don't know whether it's going to be longer than 5.3 or shorter than 5.3 or suspect that, um, then it's two-sided, right? We just say it's not equal to. But here, if we think it's not going to last as long, that means we think it's shorter than 5.3. So um, let's keep that in mind as we, you know, when we run our test. So we got a sample of 50 cars, depending on which version. So the, these are all randomized. So you might have had 45, 50, or 55 cars. Um, the, the sample average of 4.9, again, that number would have been different depending on which version of this question you had, but something along these lines. And then a standard deviation of 1.2 years. Keep in mind, right, that standard deviation is from the sample. So we took a sample of these cars and got a mean and standard deviation. Okay, so that means we are using the sample standard deviation, S, which means if we go to tests, right, we're deciding between a Z test and a T test, we're gonna be using a T test, right? Anytime we're using the, the uh, sample standard deviation, we have to use the T curve, right? It accounts for a little bit more error, a little bit more variability. So um, we did not have data to put in the list, so we go over to stats. Mu naught, again, this is the, the average under our null hypothesis. So that was the 5.3. This is what we assume to be true. X bar, X bar is what it's always been. The sample mean, so that's 4.9. S, right, S for the sample standard deviation. If you use a Z test, it's gonna say sigma. So we don't have sigma, we have S. This is 1.2. N sample size, that's just 50 in this particular example. And then the next part is the, the alternative. Do we think that uh, mu, the actual value, is just something other than 5.3, something less than 5.3, something greater than 5.3? Well, again, this is the bold part there. May not last as long. So that sounds like less than 5.3 years. If we calculate this thing, right, we get everything out of here. So we're gonna get a p-value, and again, if you had a different version of this, you're going to have a different p-value. But um, in this case, it's 0 0.01123, etc. Um, if you got an answer of 0 0.0225, right, that's because you did a two-sided test for this one. Um, we have to let the wording clue us in. So it's not our gut feeling. It's definitely what the wording and the problem suggests we do. So this is definitely a one-sided test. Um, <clears throat> all right, the second question here is uh, we've got watermelon seeds losing their viability over time. So this one is, right, either a seed grows or it doesn't, right? So that sounds more like a yes or no type of question. That's a categorical thing. So when that happens, we know that we're dealing with proportions, and we only have a single proportion to go off of. In this case, it's 116 out of 200. So... Uh, we're looking at running a test at the 0.05 level. We know that it's a one proportion test. So we go over to our tests, right? There is only one option. It's the one prop Z test. There is no one prop T test. So thankfully with proportions, it's actually easier than with means. So we do one prop, right? Single proportion. It's a Z test. So we basically just say, okay, well, what are our um, values here? So I'll start with X and N. I'll go back to, to P naught. So X is 116, right? How many successes did we have? So 116 sprouted out of N or sample size of 200, right? So we just pop those in. Um, what are we trying to compare to? Well, so the, the question that we're trying to figure out is um, do at least half of these sprout, right? So we're, we're trying to figure out what conclusion um, we're looking for evidence to support that 
uh, more than half sprout. Okay, so that means that half or 0.5 is our, whoops, not there, um, 0.5 is our um, proposed value for this proportion, right? And if we are looking for, again, you know, are we thinking that it's, it's something other than a half, less than a half, greater than a half, um, if we want evidence to support that more than half, right, greater than P naught, so greater than 0.5, so it's a one-sided thing, calculate this, our P value is, right, our P value here is 0 0.0118, uh, if we're rounding to four decimal places, okay, that's definitely less than the alpha value of 0.05. Right. When that happens, right, that means that our results are incredibly rare. So we know we're going to reject the null. So because the p-value, well, the first two say p is greater than alpha. Those are out, right? So those two, uh, those are going to be out. Um, C and D here, the p-value is less than alpha. Okay, that's true for both. Um, do we reject the null? Yes, we reject it because the null is saying like, oh, okay, I think it's half. We just built up evidence to say that it's actually greater than half. This, this very small p-value is saying, here's the likelihood of getting our sample results if the null is true. So that means our sample results would only occur 1.18% of the time. That's super rare. So we don't believe the null is true. So we want this uh, where we reject the null. And so we think there is evidence to say that more than half of the seeds will sprout.